For research purposes, we define mediumship as an experience in which an individual, the medium, purports to be in communication with or under the control of the personality of a deceased person or other non-material being. Under this definition, we can see mediumistic experience throughout history in most cultures throughout times. We can see these experiences, for example, in the oracles in ancient Greece, in the Delphi oracle, for example. We can see in the Hebrew prophets seeing or talking to angels or to God, or in ancient Christians in contact with the Holy Spirit. And more currently, we can see these experiences in many channeling experiences, mediumistic experiences, in the Pentecostals, and even in the Charismatic Catholics. Since the 19th century, many researchers, especially from psychology and psychiatry, have investigated in depth mediumistic experience and other trans experiences. And this kind of investigation have raised, have produced many important developments understanding of mind. For example, the idea of unconsciousness, of subliminal mind, hysteria, and even dissociation. Most of these concepts received a strong input from foreign studies involving mediumistic experience. For example, Pierre Janet, Frederick Myers, Carl Jung, all these were strongly based on investigations on mediumistic experience. During this more than one century of scientific investigation of mediumistic experiences, several hypotheses have been raised to explain this experience, this phenomenon. The most common uh, hypothesis can be summarized in the following. The first would be fraud. This experience would be simply fraud from someone that would like to take advantage of other people. The other hypothesis would be mental disorder or hallucination. People having mediumistic or trans experience are actually uh, people with severe mental disorders, psychotic or dissociative disorders, so they should be treated. This was the main understanding during the first half of the 20th century in Europe and in Americas. There are some other people who believe that these experiences are not necessarily pathological and they are raised by the unconscious mind activity. So the unconscious mind could personalize in some alternate personality and behave such as a different personality. And this, these are basically the most common and orthodox explanations. And there are also two main non-orthodox explanations that would require a broader understanding of mind or of mind-brain relationship. One hypothesis is regarding the extrasensorial perception. So the medium would have some powers of telepathy or clairvoyance, and based on these extrasensorial perceptions, mediums would be able to get this kind of information. And finally, the last hypothesis would be about a non-local mind, some sort of non-material mind not related to the brain of the medium would be the ultimate source of these experiences. Actually, this, ex this hypothesis has been raised and discussed in depth by many researchers in the last century, and there is a huge controversy over them. So, since mediumistic experiences were important in the past to advance our knowledge about mind, current studies are still in need exactly to help us to foster our understanding of mind, of human nature, and of spiritual experiences.